Everybody, happy Tuesday. Apologies for live yesterday. Um, if you want to take a quick look at something, look at Santa Barbara on Twitter or something like that, or just see what it's been like. Uh, there's people like taking boats through the streets. It's It was nuts. It's died down a little bit today with the wind and the rain, so I should be good for live later. But I'm a little nervous, so probably just going to be doing one big lineup on each site. I might try to try to get a couple other lineups in, and I'll, I'll post those on the site, my early builds and all that. But it certainly is a little bit of a weird weather to deal with. And then we've got a slate that looks like everybody is basically out. So we're going to have to prioritize. And I'm going to go through it and try and figure it out. Uh, it'll be easier at 6 Eastern when we have confirmation. Hopefully some a starting lineup or two will come while we're on air. Because right now it's a, it's a little tricky one to maneuver because there's a lot of value you're weighing versus other value. So starting with that, let's uh, let's get out of here. I was going game by game on my own before I started this. So I was starting the Clippers. We're going to jump over to the first game of the night, the Detroit-Philly game. Okay, so the way I would to prioritize it is to, to probably make sure to – like the one thing is they have a lot of bodies when you look down. You also never know when that weird Corey Joseph playing 25 minutes, 30 minutes is going to come out of. They've also still got like, like what, 11 guys that are projected to actually play minutes tonight. Oddly, Isaiah Livers being in even makes a difference because it's an extra extra minutes to go around. We have Noel who's projected to play minutes tonight. It's just a little bit of a weird one. But the way I would do it with the guards and the wings, so Diallo, Hayes, Ivy, and uh, Bay. <clears throat> yeah, Diallo, Hayes, Ivy, Burks, and Bay. I think that you try to play at least one of those guys. The favorite would be Diallo because of the price. But I have no problem if you wanted to pick Hayes or Ivy. Ivy should be the lowest owned. Burks is probably my least favorite of that group, but I don't mind getting to some Sadiq Bay. Um, we know he's got a ceiling, and I think that's you know I think I think, I think he's interesting. The priority here for me is Isaiah Stewart. With no, we have still have no Bagley, and we have no uh, Jalen Duran tonight. So I think Isaiah Stewart is pretty clearly on his own. Just a really really strong play. I don't think you need to weigh him with somebody else. Um, I guess you could say he and Ivy uh, could cut into each other a little bit, but because of the way that they're running their rotation and the positional eligibility, I still like Stewart. It's going to be tricky if Embiid plays because then you get foul trouble possibility with Stewart. You also get a better chance of Noel playing, hey, former Sixer back at home, um, playing more minutes. So just keep an eye out for that, and let's keep an eye out for starting lineups as the time gets closer, uh, at least the first game of the night, because this is pretty much the opposite of a lot of slates. I, I think that the later games are less interesting than the early games, at least for value as, as far as that goes. But overall, I think, at, you know, at, at early look, I think you're trying to play a couple guys from Detroit. Uh, my favorites being the two top point per dollar ones, Diallo and Stewart. But I, I actually kind of like the Hayes-Stewart combination. Um, and I don't mind if you want to play three even without a run back, I would probably look for a run back. If, if there's no MB, I'm definitely playing either Harden, Maxi, or even Melton. Um, but Maxi would be my favorite. Uh, even with MB, I think I still like Maxi. So I'm very open to that on this as a run back. If I wanted to go a 3 1 or a 4 1 with Detroit and play Maxi on the run back, uh, I think that's totally a viable route to go. Moving over to OKC, who is not missing anybody, which means they're basically a cross off for me unless somebody gets somebody gets announced out. I just don't see the reason to to try to find thin value when there's other value out there. I think Shea is fine as a spend up. He's not my favorite, but he's fine. I think Giddy is always fine, especially because Miami doesn't have anybody. Usually, I, I get nervous about playing guys against Miami. It's just really that they have too many healthy bodies. They're priced reasonably. Miami still doesn't play like ultra quick. It is in Miami. Um, I, everything sort of leads me to be off OKC right now, except for the fact that when I get over to Miami, we have serious priority things again. Um, so starting with the big man position, you're going to have, you have, you have basically eight guys on the, who are available. The, Haslam is the ninth, but he's only going to play about five minutes. So those minutes have to go somewhere. So we have to prioritize at least two, probably Miami players on most slates, maybe only one on some, in, in some ways, because there's value elsewhere. But I think that it's probably looking at two in most lineups. From the big man side of it, I prefer Robinson over Deadman. Neither need to play, but there's eight guys, so they have to. Um, you could even see Highsmith at center lineups possibly today. But I like Orlando Robinson. I think that he's he's the the more obvious of the of the bunch. Um, if you're not going to play him, play Deadman. Um, uh, play some Deadman. But I, I do think that you don't need to play Deadman here. It's it's 
feels a little bit thin and we don't know about the minutes unless of course Deadman is starting and then scratch what I said and you go Deadman. But Deadman or Robinson, certainly a priority on this slate. Um, I think uh, I think that if you get into the other positions, you've got the uh, Gabe Vincent, Oladipo, backcourt thing. And I, I just have it. I think I, I would rather play one rather than both together unless I was playing something on the other side. Because I'm going to end up already with Robinson and my my most of my lineups, maybe some dead men in there. But I think then you go your next step is Oladipo and Vincent, and I like Oladipo a lot here today. And I think Vincent is always. I mean, look, the price is too reasonable. I think you want to end up getting to two or three Miami guys in general. So I think that Oladipo is my preferred guy over Vincent, but I have no problem using Vincent um, as well. Then you get into Highsmith and Struss. I actually like Highsmith a little bit. He tends to play a lot of minutes in these situations. Uh, projected for 32 tonight. Love, love, love the minutes against OKC. Always good minutes. And I think those are, those are both very reasonable. And then if you were to stack, or even if you just wanted to find a, a decent higher price play, I think Jimmy Butler is, you know, totally reasonable on this slate. Miami's really been struggling. They only got eight bodies. It's not like they can just rest Butler or do something like that. Um, but I, I really do think that you're 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 looking at all these guys, and I think that you're playing at least two from Miami. Um, so if you're playing two from Miami, two from Detroit, probably right off the bat, and that's the minimum. I think you could play as many as four um, from Miami, but I would probably like a run back if I was going to do that. Uh, just you don't need to though. Like they, 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 it's such a good spot, and, and there's just so many bodies down. I think it's reasonable. Uh, Oladipo, Robinson being my favorites. Um, but I, I think everybody here is to needless to say firmly in play. And I will have at least two of these guys probably on most of my lineups, unless some other crazy news comes in. Charlotte, Toronto, not getting to anything from Charlotte, tough matchup. If you wanted to run, cause I think that you could play Toronto here and I'll, I'll get into why I, in just a minute, but Lamelo is is ten k is a fair price for him. I, I think that's, that's reasonable. Terry Rozier at 6,900, completely reasonable. And Jalen McDaniels with no uh, with no Hayward, I think you know he's been solid, but probably want more of a ceiling like Jalen McDaniels versus you know Oladipo. I think Oladipo is just a much better play. So it's just a little bit tricky from that from that perspective. When you get over to Toronto, the reason why you do kind of wish you had a run back is that I think this is an incredible spot for all these guys. And Toronto has not been playing great basketball this season either. Um, I think that, the, you know, if you think this game is going to stay close at all, you probably want to get at least one Toronto guy in. I think Siaka makes a ton of sense as a spend up. We've seen what the bigs have done to Charlotte. It's actually all the biggest games of the year at center are against Charlotte. Siakam should have a field day. At the same time, every one of these guys I can make a really good case for. I think Scotty Barnes is my other favorite along with Siakam. And I have no problem with OG uh, Van Vliet. Totally fine with me. Probably not the kind of game where I want to roster him as much, just because they tend to tend to use him when they really need him. When he, or the games he goes way off, and I don't know if that's going to be the case tonight. And then you've always got the wild card of Gary Trent. So I just have one Toronto listed in there, but I don't think you have to. It's just a I like all these guys. They're going to play a lot of minutes, even in blowout run. They tend to play some minutes, and there's no guarantee that this game blows out. Uh, just because Toronto hasn't been the same this year. I think they get treated as if they were the same team they've been in the previous seasons. And they, they just aren't. Um, they are going to play, a, a, you know, a lot of guys, probably 10 guys tonight. But, I, I you know, they're going to play their starters the, so many of the minutes. I do think trying to get one of these guys in, and potentially even using your spend-up on Siakam is a really good way to go. I should say one of your spend-ups because you've got so much value tonight. Cleveland, uh, Utah, I think that Mobley and Jared Allen are both in good spots. I don't know that I'm going to get to them. And I think a long shot Donovan Mitchell going back to Utah play is certainly interesting, but not what I'm looking to prioritize, but I, I'm considering it. Uh, no, nobody who's a massive priority for me over there. On the Orlando side, um, I'm sorry, on the Utah side, I like Walker Kessler in general, a tough matchup for him, but 4,700 without, you know, without the uh, other bigs and, and assuming that he starts, I feel like that's very reasonable. So I think that he belongs like in, in in play, but I don't know how we can rate him ahead of the other value, especially when they can play Ag Agbaji plenty of minutes. They could they could play Vanderbilt at the five um, a little bit, although they're going to need a multiple five. They could play Markin at the four, moving Vanderbilt at the five. They can actually play Markin at the five in some ways in this matchup. So 
not doing much on Utah, but but open to considering Walker Kessler. Would like to find another late late game piece in case some news breaks. Um, that's always what I like to do these days because we just have so many Q tags. This is really weird. The Suns are missing basically, you know, their best players with Paul and Booker, and then you have question marks on 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 Craig, Aiton, and Shamit. I think those guys probably play. I can't figure out what to do here. I, I, my first instinct is to probably just let it go. You could play Damian Lee going back to to you to Golden State on as a value play, but look at all the other values we just talked about. Is he really better than those values? They still have bodies. Um, is he better than even Saric on his own team? Like it's just tricky. I think people, you know, like like Sham. I like Shaman in general. I'm kind of shocked that see it took this long in his NBA career to actually do anything fantasy viable. He's been like the where fantasy points go to die his whole career, but he's been on some good teams, so that's part of the reason. Um, this Phoenix team has not been a good team, you know, as constructed with without without Devin Booker. Uh, but I think Sham is a little bit of a reach at, to play at chalk at 5K just on this slate because again Oladipo versus Shamit. Oladipo is playing on a team with eight guys. Um, Shamit they at least have bodies and he's shooting reliant, whereas Oladipo can actually initiate offense and do some other things that Miami will need. That's just where I keep running into it. We've seen Mikael Bridges have some games in these spots. I think he's okay. If I end up on these guys, like they're, they're, they're all end up guys for me. Aiton, end up guy. I actually think Aiton might be, you could, you could consider maybe a little bit more of a priority. Um, but all the value just feels like a little meh. It could be Dwayne Washington season again, but it could just as likely be Damian Lee and Shamit. Like it just, it's just really tough. So as of right now, but as I never thought I would, when I got the message, Chris Paul was out last night. For today's game, I was like, sure, we were going to be loading up on Phoenix. I'm not sure that's the case. So as of right now, sort of meh on Phoenix at the moment. Um, on Golden State, uh, with Curry coming back, supposedly, absolutely no interest in anything here. Um, Wiggins, should, Wiggins will be back there too. I think he played one game already. Uh, I am I am just off of this game in general. It's uh, too bad. Kind of a fun game, but not going to get there myself. Orlando on the back-to-back has me pretty much off of everyone. Uh, I think everybody rates to be as completely fine, <laughs> which makes me not all that interested. If I had to pick anyone, I'd probably pick Cole Anthony or Franz Wagner. Um, but, but you know, part of the reason why you want to have subs is like they played last night. Bull Bull should be coming back. Somebody could sit here, but it probably won't be interesting enough to play them um, either way. Also, you have some game script issues where Portland, that you know, could, could blow them out. I uh, lo- love Nurkic in this matchup. Uh, not crazy about him getting the ownership. I, you know, I've always been on the play you Nurkic know, at low ownership side. Uh, the minutes definitely seem to be in flux. I actually think Gary Payton being back kind of hurts him a little bit because they can play some small lineups with Grant at the five and Payton playing the pseudo five, which he did for Golden State. I know that sounds really weird because he's like a point guard, but we've seen it before with, when they do that with teams. So just gives them more flexibility, which makes it a little less interesting. However, I still have Nurkic as a priority play because I think the ceiling is too high. There's too many times he's, you know, right around 50 here for me not to play him. That even if he doesn't play that many minutes, I don't even think he hurts me that bad. I think he still puts up in the 30 fantasy point range. So that's not what I want, but I, I'll play him for the 45 to 50s. And I think that's very, very likely tonight. So I do actually have Nurkic as a, as a real play tonight. Um, on the, in the Dallas uh, Clipper game, the last game of the night, Look, we have all the money in the world to spend. I think we may as well spend it on Luca. Like, that's my take. <laughs> no, we don't have to. There's other ways you can build. I mentioned that as a spend up, I really like Siakam. But Luca is, the, you know, you've got the highest floor, the highest ceiling. And I actually think that it's a, it's a better matchup than it has been in years past. One, without Paul George playing. And two, that Paul George and Kawhi, when they do play, are trying to carry the offensive load. And not that man and these guys are not bad defenders, but. With Luca, unless you have like like three awesome defenders who are wings, because you're going to have so much switching and doubling and trapping and hedging against you know the, that high screen and roll they run all the time, it's it's just not it, it doesn't worry me as much as it usually would. Even though there are some some decent athletes, so I, I do like the idea of spending up for Luca um, if you can, and I think Luca and Kawhi make a good back and forth. Kawhi, we're going 8,700. Okay, well, what have we got? As you know, wh- where is his ceiling going lately? I mean, he did shoot in the last game against Atlanta. He was nine of 23 and he still put up 48 fantasy points without Paul George. I'm going to have some interest in Kawhi, but it, again, I just kind of prefer other spend ups a little bit more Terrence Mann getting a lot of love who I actually like a lot as a real life player, his fantasy points. We know by playing him guys, there's a wide range of outcomes with this guy's fantasy points. So it's just hard for me to rate him ahead of the other value. But what he does is if you wanted to play one of the Phoenix guys and him, 
or even Walker Kessler and him and then maybe one other piece in the late games and then use all the other five spots for the early games. It just gives you some swap ability in case we do get some of these Q tags out. Um, so getting a few guys in the later games from a strategy standpoint makes a lot of sense, but not guys I absolutely love. I actually think Zubac is potentially the most interesting play here. Now you don't need to play big and we know the Clippers like to go small, but they like to do it more when they have both George and Leonard healthy. Kawhi has had a little bit, of, I'm sorry, uh, Zubac has had a little bit of up and get up and down minutes. On a back-to-back, -back, him only playing 21 minutes doesn't worry me. The 15 games against Den uh, against uh, Denver, I believe it was. Um, I believe that it was a blowout. I got to double check my things. So the, you, you have some some minutes that are a little bit all over the place, and a guy who doesn't look all that appealing. But give me the ceiling, man. I like the 46 fantasy points. Uh, you can beat up Dallas a little bit inside without Paul George. He could get some more touches. Um, so the way I have this is. I have one of Man, Powell, or Zubach that I might just go out of my way to just play one of these guys. I think they're all interesting, but I don't I don't have like a love for them the way I do the early value. The problem is it gives you some swappability for the late stuff. And by the way, these guys are all still good enough, even if the, that value doesn't come. So if I wanted to play one of those guys with Luca on the other side, I think that's reasonable. And I think all three of those guys are definitely firmly in play. So well, it's a wild slate. There's a lot to figure out. We don't have an you know, exact, okay, we have this, have to play this guy. And it's weird because usually when you get these kind of, you know, 6X, 10X, 8X values, this Orlando Robinson thing has got to be a joke. Even, even at, I like Orlando Robinson, but to project him for 35 feels a little ambitious. Um, anyway, uh, I do think like when you look at the value from the Miami Detroit things, I just think there's so much more interesting stuff than there is in anywhere else that's hard to avoid. But using things like Siakam as your spend up, as a spend up, people aren't going to do that much of. As of right now, Luke is not projected for as much ownership. I think that's going to change. I think he's going to be pretty popular. Um, and then, you know, guys like Nurkic in the middle tier. Um, guys, like, you know, I, I love Oladipo tonight. I mentioned that. <clears throat> Scotty Barnes. One of the Toronto guys, all at low ownership, I think is interesting. Uh, just an interesting way to go because – you are going to need to spend money somewhere. So anyway, I'll post my early builds. Once I have them settled, I will post my core plays once I have them settled and I will post my bets of the day. Once I have them decided uh, I've gone through stuff for a while. So I, I, I feel pretty prepared for this slate, but as we know, that doesn't necessarily mean anything at nine in the morning. So good luck to everybody today. Good luck to me and not having another rain out and crazy weather day. And it's kind of fun, but at the same time, it's a little scary. And I have friends who lost cars and stuff. So shame. So uh, think about Santa Barbara. I, I don't use the word pray, but, uh, you know, keep us in your thoughts and hope that, uh, hope things go well. I know it's, we should, we're not, we're not usually one to complain. We don't usually have major weather issues, but partly for that reason, the road up, I can't go see my family because there's too many boulders in the road. They've shut down the 101 and the 154 up here. So it's just tricky. So, uh, think about us, think about uh, having a good slate tonight. And I, I really feel like we're going to, we're going to have a big win really soon. I had a buddy last night win 350,000. He won the 3180. He won the 555. He won the, I believe he won the 555. And he won another uh, another seat at the final. And I believe he won the fadeaway in another tournament as well, which is pretty nuts. He only played like 20 lineups. Anyway, good luck to everybody. Congrats to man, my man, Matt. And uh, we'll see you guys hopefully at the top of leaderboards. And we'll definitely see you at 6 Eastern for live, assuming there is no blackout. Good luck.